I see unpleasant feelings as really um, central to our life. Uh, the, the first thing is to understand that they exist for protective purposes. Uh, and, and so most of us try to avoid them. And I'll speak in a moment about why I think we do that. But the first thing I would want people to understand is that unpleasant feelings are designed for protective purposes. That's why they exist. So, so think unpleasant feelings for protection and pleasant ones, uh, pleasant feelings exist for connection and I think also creativity. So and that's a, an important shift because for unpleasant feelings, most of us have labeled them as just bad. Right. And, and I ones that we I, didn't be happy with. Correct. And I never use the word bad or negative for unpleasant feelings. They're unpleasant, mm -hmm. they're uncomfortable, they're unsettling, they're unsomething. Mm -hmm. They're not bad or negative. So the first thing I would have you do is take that language out and just start labeling them as difficult, unpleasant, or uncomfortable. And then they, they actually become easier to tolerate once you change the language around them. Again, so mm -hmm. words have vibration to them and, and we start to react even just by the use of the word. So mm -hmm. toss bad or negative, they're unpleasant or uncomfortable. And, and, and when, I, we see them as something that's, when we see them as something that's survival based, then we know that there's a message there for us. Something in right. the situation triggered my survival responses. I wonder what that is. We can get curious about it rather than just shutting it down and saying, nope, I shouldn't be feeling that way. I'm not gonna feel that way. That's too uncomfortable, too unpleasant. So that's bad. Uh, right, uh, right. So, so see, what the, see the whole range of what you feel as a, a resource pool of information. Mm -hmm. And, and if you try to ditch half of that information, you're missing a, a lot of important data for you to use in life, right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing for me is that all the whole range of what we feel is the essence of our aliveness. Exactly. So feelings to me equals aliveness. You try to cut out part of that, now you're numbing yourself down. And, and, and when we numb ourselves down, sure, we can numb some of those more unpleasant feelings, but we also numb the joy, the happiness, the more positive experiences. And we, we start to become living in this rigid window of tolerance for emotion. Right, right. I actually think we, yes, exactly. So we, if we shut down on one side, we're muffling the other side. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So and this comes at a high energy cost. It's a, it's a lot of energy for us to be shutting down emotions that are natural for the body to be experiencing. Exactly, exactly, right. And again, part of what I want people to wrap their heads around is that this is the essence of aliveness, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, so you take that away, then, you, then you're actually damping down your own sense of aliveness. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, for me, it's like, uh, I had two big questions in life, and, and it, it, I'm sure I had more, but the two big ones that really stood out, one had to do, <clears throat> excuse me, one had to do with um, how one develops confidence, because that, that again, that came out of uh, my childhood, because I wasn't that confident child. And then the second, as I got into my professional life, had to do with what made it so difficult for people to deal with unpleasant feelings. And, and as a psychologist, I would notice that, you know, like people struggled with how they think and that, you know, that affected them too. But, but it was the unpleasant feelings that I felt people struggled even more with. So if I dial it into it, what I came up with was kind of a, a formula as I began to understand what was behind it. And again, my perspective is that I, the formula, I'm sorry, the formula is uh, one choice, eight feelings, 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. So the one choice for me is that I wanted people to lean into yep. unpleasant feelings. To, Which is a choice. <laughs> it is, it's totally a choice. And, well, it's a choice to a degree, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and that, so that the, the idea here is that you're, you're choosing to be as aware of and in touch with as much of your moment to moment experience as possible. And we're doing that instead of, of distracting or disconnecting. And we, you know, so what does distraction or disconnection look like? Well, it looks like social media or screens. It looks like shopping. It looks like uh, for men a little bit more than women, it looks like pornography or sex, or it could be uh, alcohol or substances, or it, it could actually be 
having feelings about having feelings or judging yourself for having feelings. Those are distractions too. So my thing is that's all avoidance behavior. We don't want avoidance. It keeps you kind of checked out, doesn't help you. And instead the, the ideas choose into awareness. So that was the first part. The second is the eight feelings. And, and the feelings that I always talk about are sadness, shame, helplessness, anger, vulnerability, embarrassment, disappointment, and frustration. Yep. So what happens here is like, like why these eight? Because anxiety's not there, fear's not there, guilt's not there, all for good reason in my head. But the, the idea here for me is that it's these eight feelings because they're the most common everyday spontaneous reactions to things not turning out the way that we want or the way that we believe we need. I'm not sure that we even understand how often we feel those when we are distracting ourselves so much from those very same feelings. It wasn't until I actually became a lot more present that I realized how frequently I was going into feeling embarrassed feeling shame, <laughs> feeling disappointment. I didn't know that I was feeling that much because I was avoiding them that much. Well, yeah, right. So you have to, you have to be able to lean into them to even <laughs> gather that, uh, you know, that awareness, if you will. Yeah. So, and, and again, for me, it's like, why these eight? It's be, again, I think I, I may have just said that because they're most common. That's how we react everyday life. Yep. And, and so it's, if I put some of the other ones in, it would be, uh, it, it would not actually be our everyday life reactions. Mm -hmm. So the so that's the second part of it. And then the third part is the method, really, is the 90 seconds. Yep. And what I, again, so this is me trying to solve, how do I help somebody handle unpleasant feelings better? So the first part of it is understanding that we're one interconnected whole, right? That we're not a mind or a brain sitting on top of a body that has no connection to itself. Or in fact, one interconnected whole. And many people would describe the body as the subconscious mind, actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it represents our subconscious mind. And, but one interconnected whole, the second part of it is from the neuroscience research is understanding that the way that most of us come to know what we're feeling emotionally is through bodily sensation. Yeah. So think uh, redness, uh, that you might see redness into my neck and face, if I'm embarrassed, I would be feeling the heat of that, of what you're seeing as redness, I would be feeling the heat as the bodily sensation, mm -hmm. right? So uh, that's one, just one example, I can give many more, but, but the, then, so the second part is again, that, that just understanding, we come to know what we feel, most of us become aware of it through bodily sensation. Mm -hmm. And then the third part for me was something that Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor wrote in her book, My Stroke of Insight. And, and the observation she made was that when a feeling of gets triggered, if you will, there's a rush of biochemicals that flood into the bloodstream that activate the bodily sensations I was just talking about. Yes. And they flush out of the bloodstream in an upper limit roughly of about 90 seconds. Yep. So what dawned on me is that if, if I could help people understand that to deal with unpleasant feelings meant riding bodily sensation waves, For sort, of like they were, sort of like they were riding a wave in an ocean, mm -hmm. yep. then, then it, one, it would always subside. Mm -hmm. And then the second is that it was short-lived, yep. right? So in order to lean into one or more of these eight feelings, it's a matter of riding one or more, and I would emphasize the bodily sensation waves. Mm -hmm. so, so, it's, so the key here is if you can ride one or more short-lived bodily sensation waves of one or more of eight unpleasant feelings, then you can go pursue anything you want in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 100%. And like, this is why I wanted you to be able to share this information with people on this summit, because like, this is exactly what we're talking about. There is a biology to emotions. It's not just in our heads. <laughs> it's not just our thoughts. There are actually chemicals, signaling molecules that happen throughout our body that create a bodily experience of an emotion. And that is what is often the most uncomfortable part of the emotion itself. 
It's not the actual emotion. It's the bodily experience. It's what's right. going on in the body that is that can be very uncomfortable for people. In fact, that was that really for me was the turning point. It was realizing that that what people were doing was wanting to avoid the bodily sensation. Yep. Help them know what they were feeling. And that mm -hmm. that's what people were trying to avoid so desperately. And that if I could get people to understand that it was going to be a short-lived bodily sensation wave, then that they, they could do it. And most people, when I talk to them and tell them this, one, they get surprised by the, oh, I really, I come to know what I'm feeling through bodily okay. sensation. And then the mm -hmm. second part is, oh, it's short-lived. I can do 90 seconds, mm -hmm. right? So then all of a sudden, now that people could lean into whatever it was that they mm -hmm. were dealing with. Mm -hmm.